Hey friends, welcome back to part 3 of my new series on personal finance for students in Germany. If you're new here, my name is Essen. I'm a researcher and on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that can help us achieve financial freedom. In this video, I will share how to manage taxes and tax returns for students in Germany. This is a very complex topic and not every case is the same. So I will try to provide information that applies to the majority. In many cases, filing a tax return is not mandatory. For example, if you are in tax class 1 or are married and both the partners are in tax class 4-4 combination, then you are not legally obliged to submit a tax return annually. Most students usually do not have a registered partner in Germany, so they are taxed on tax class number 1 and many also have just one job at a time. So it's not necessary for them to file a tax return. But if you are someone who has multiple jobs at the same time, then one of those jobs will be taxed at tax class 6, where you will have to pay higher taxes. And you are also obliged to file a tax return the next year. For all mandatory filers, the deadline is generally the 31st of July of the following year. But sometimes there are extensions as well. For voluntary tax returns, one can apply for up to 4 years in the past. So in 2022, a student can apply for a tax return for 2021, 2020, 2019 and 2018 and can carry forward losses up to 7 years from the past. More on that later in the video. If you were obliged to submit a tax return and did not submit it, then you will have to pay a fine which keeps on increasing the longer you wait to file your tax returns. If you are liking this video so far, I would really appreciate if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Now here comes the interesting part. As a student, you are entitled to make a claim on everything you paid for which help you in your studies. Let's start with your studies cost. In your tax return, you can claim your semester fee, university registration fee, exam fee and any other fee that you can prove contributed to your studies. You can also claim study aiding materials too in acquisition costs. The tax office usually accepts a fixed flat rate of 110 euros in this category without mentioning anything. But unfortunately, there is no guarantee of recognition. If your expenses are higher than 110 euros, you can add all the individual costs. You can also include electronic devices that you purchased in the previous years. So in this category, you can claim buying a laptop, printer, smartphone, any software and technical literature that you bought to aid in your studies. Here you can also claim other costs. For example, printing costs, pens, papers, etc. Remember, if these acquisition costs are more than 950 euros in a year, then these costs will be carried forward to the next year in a tax loss carry forward or a Verlust Vortrag, which I will explain later on in this video. Then we have the transportation costs. Students can claim transportation costs from their house to the university at a rate of 0.3 euros per kilometer. But these can only be claimed for one-way costs. You can also claim travel costs to seminars, the library or any other study event and here two-way costs will be accepted. A simple example would be a student who visits the universities 100 days in a year and in the same year they went to the library 50 times. Their house is 10 kilometers away from the university and the library. So their claimable travel cost would be 600 euros. Application costs are also claimable. Each time you apply for an internship, a thesis or a full-time job, you can claim the application fees. If you send these through regular mail, you can claim up to 8.5 euros per application and up to 2 euros per email. As a student, relocation to a new city for internships or thesis is very often. Such relocations are also claimable, up to 820 euros for singles and 1640 euros for coupled partners. Then there is also telephone and internet costs which can be a maximum of 240 euros per year and bank management costs of 16 euros a year. But with these costs, there is a very low chance of acceptance. Then there are certain costs which might be claimable, but the probability of these claims being accepted is very low. One such example would be the travel costs of moving to Germany. So this can include your visa fees and the flight ticket to Germany. You can also claim one trip home per calendar year with this claim, I was not able to find any new information as all of the information was pretty old and this might not be claimable anymore. An important thing is to keep proof of things whenever possible. This will help you manage your expenses and help you later on when you apply 
for a tax refund. You can claim many things and often the tax office does not require proof. But in case the tax office does ask you for proof, you are not legally required to provide that proof. So in that case, if there is no proof given to them, the tax office will simply ignore that specific claim. Remember that you need to pay taxes in order to get a return. Many students actually do not earn a lot during their studies, so they cannot claim every single thing. So here, Fardus Fotrag is generally created. This is a claim that you can carry forward your losses to the next years. As a student, you can carry forward up to seven years so that you can claim all of your study costs when you have paid enough taxes. If you know of any claims that I have missed here, please share them in the comments below so that others can also benefit from your knowledge. Now there are other taxes which you need to be aware of. For example, taxes on stocks and ETFs. So in this video, I discuss investing for students in Germany. And if you want to submit a tax return, I share the whole process step by step in this video. So thanks for watching, bleib gesund and I'll see you in this video.